Hey guys, and welcome back to a video no one asked for. You read the title, I'm gonna be making foods inspired by the show you. For a series with so much murder, there's a lot of delicious food being shown, especially in season two. Quick disclaimer, if you've never seen the show and you're planning to do so, this video won't contain any major spoilers, but I am gonna get into some specific, smaller plot points. So this might spoil little things, but yeah, watch at your own risk. The way they use food in the show is very interesting. It is often being used to move the plot forward or to symbolize, portray something. Like in that moment where Joe gives Paco the sandwich he just bought for himself, lying about having plenty of food at home. So early on in the story, Joe is being established as Paco's caretaker. Anyway, I picked four foods to recreate today. Pretty much all of them are desserts. For this first one, I wanted to make the thank you donut Beck gives to Joe at the beginning of season one. But after creating this monstrosity on my first attempt, I decided to go for donut bites instead. It is a lot easier to make tiny ones, especially if you don't have any frying equipment. In a mixing bowl or a deep dish plate, combine spelt flour and salt. Warm up some non-dairy milk. Make sure it's not boiling. Pour the milk into a separate bowl, adding aquafaba, vanilla, and sugar. Quickly mix it together, then add dry active yeast, and let it sit for about 10 minutes. Pour the wet ingredients into the dry. Mix it with a spatula until it roughly comes together. Then dump the mix onto a lightly floured surface, kneading it with your hands for two to three minutes. It really helps oiling your hands with like a teaspoon of vegetable oil. Knead the dough until it looks something like this. Put it into another breakfast bowl, cover it up with a dish towel, and then place it somewhere warm for about 30 minutes. Combine a terrifying amount of powdered sugar with a tablespoon of maple syrup, vanilla, and water. Take out the dough. Quickly knead it again on the still floured surface. Roll it into little balls. Place them on a baking sheet lined with parchment paper and let them rise on the counter for another 15 to 30 minutes. Grab a saucepan, add plenty of oil. I'm using sunflower. Bring the heat to medium high. I don't have a fry thermometer, a frymometer. I have to rely on the wooden spoon technique. Once bubbles are forming around the wood, turn the heat to medium and quickly add your first batch. I would add like five bites at once. Definitely be careful when adding them to the pan. It is best to do that with one of these ladles with holes and not with a fork. Let these fry for about a minute and a half total, rotating them until they turn golden brown. Transfer them to a plate lined with paper towels, and that's it. For this next recipe, we are making actually somewhat enjoyable celery juice. I love green juice, but celery is basically Satan's butt plug. First, get some celery. Remove the front part and run the stalks under some water. Then, take your mom's fancy juicer and juice the celery. Now, in an interview, I believe Penn Badgley said that on set they cut the celery juice with apples to make it more drinkable. So that's what I did here as well. Adding like one to two apples. Also some extra greens, cause I was worried this wasn't gonna be green enough. Pour this into a high speed blender. Add frozen pineapple and a squeeze of lemon juice. Blend and that's it. I like this much better than regular celery juice. To be honest, it's still not my favorite drink on the planet. My sisters, on the other hand, really enjoyed it, but, but they're weird. <laughs> on to recipe number three. Loves buns, am I right? So these are gonna be chocolate chip rolls for two. To a small mixing bowl, add warm non-dairy milk, aquafaba, vanilla, raw sugar, and melted vegan butter. Once again, add the yeast, and let everything sit for about 10 minutes. Meanwhile, combine the dry ingredients, flour and salt. 
Pour wet into dry, combine with a spatula until it sort of comes together, then switch to your hands, kneading the dough for two to three minutes on a floured surface. Put the ball of dough back into the bowl, cover it up, and let it rise someplace warm for about 30 minutes. In the meantime, we're gonna do some crafting. I tried recreating the muffin liners they used in the show. All you need is parchment paper. We're just gonna pretend it's red. Using a pencil and a ruler, measure out 12 centimeter by 12 centimeter large squares. Cut them out, back to the dough, knead it again for like a minute or two, roll it out, yes, that's a jar, into a rectangle. It should be about half a centimeter thick. Brush it with some melted vegan butter. And then sprinkle with lots and lots of dark chocolate chips. Roll it up tightly from the shorter side and cut it into four somewhat equally sized rolls. Grab a square, place it onto a muffin mold, press it down so the paper aligns with the pan, and then hold it with one hand while you get your chocolate roll and place it inside. Let these sit on the counter for another 15 to 20 minutes while you preheat the oven to 200 degrees Celsius. Then let these bake for 15 to 18 minutes. And that's it! These are so good. For recipe number four, I chose the muffins from the last episode. I want to say these are the best, fluffiest, least vegan tasting berry muffins I've ever made. Preheat your oven to 180 degrees. Either grease your muffin tin, use store-bought muffin liners, or once again, get crafty and make your own. In a large mixing bowl, roughly mix together the dry ingredients, spelt flour, powdered sugar, salt, and baking powder. Combine the wet ingredients. I used my now cracked food processor, because that was the only clean bowl I could find. Non-dairy milk, unsweetened applesauce, apple cider vinegar, aquafaba, vanilla, and vegetable oil or melted vegan butter. If you're also using frozen strawberries, let them defrost for a little to make them sliceable. Add the berries to the batter and let the batter sit on the counter for 10 to 20 minutes before adding it to the muffin tin. I don't know why, but I found the muffins turn out even fluffier when you do that. Fill up your muffin liners three quarters of the way. If you're doing the DIY liners here, you can add a little bit of oil inside the muffin mold. So underneath the parchment paper, I hope this makes sense because it's a little trickier with liquid batter as opposed to the chocolate chip rolls or just hold the liner down with your finger, but then it might get a little messy. Bake these guys for 25 minutes, then turn the heat to 210 degrees Celsius and let this continue to bake for three to five minutes until golden brown at the top. Let them cool off for at least 30 minutes before removing them from the pan. And that's it. That concludes the last recipe for today. Uh, let me know how you like this video in the comments. Also, let me know your thoughts about the show. What season did you prefer? What is your favorite character? Mine has to be 40. If you enjoyed this video, you might also like my videos on Stranger Things and Friends. Both are linked right here for you to click on. Thank you so much for being here. Bye. Uh, left the tongue stain, let my what hang, falling short breath, thought my lungs cave, I'm a nuisance, then these blueprints.